If you're an IT student and you know about the PAT or practical assessment task, then here are some tips and ideas, particularly for our grade 12 students. You might be struggling to find a way that you can use an object in your PAT. We have a video over there that you can use to get an idea. But in this video, we're going to try another approach, a slightly different way of using an object. And maybe this will spark an idea that you can use when incorporating an object into your PAT. So here I've got a program where we've got a simple login screen and it's connected to a database which has different types of users and the user type and so on. There's also a donations table which tells us when different users have made different donation amounts. The one way that we could use an object through the life cycle of the actual project. So the moment the user logs on, it's going to create an object that we store the user's details and every time the user does certain things, we keep adding or using the method for that object. So I'm going to make a quick object now quickly. And just to recap, you're going to go to file, new, and we want a new unit and we're going to give it a nice name. So I'm going to call it CLS user underscore U for my user class. And then make sure that you save it in the same folder. There's all my other data files. So I'm going to give the same name CLS user underscore U. So using the information that I want to collate from the database, I created the following object. I created a user, T user, and we record the username and keep track of the number of donations and the total amount of the donations in these two fields. And then I keep a list of all the donors. You can have an array in your object. So he has a donor list and each element will contain the name of a charity that has been donated to. And F list size will just be the max size of the donor list, how many entries are actually in the array. And so basically the idea is when we create our object that it'll go through this database table. And if we are using smith.john it'll only add those charities details to the object i don't need everything i don't need the date in this case so don't add too many fields to your object that you're not going to be needing to do any calculations on just give it the details that it needs and so my object has got its constructor which just takes in the username and i've got a procedure called add donation where i give it an amount and that amount will be added to the donation amount and the number of donations will be increased by one and i've got the charity name which will be added to the donor list if it's unique so what it does is it first searches to see that that charity has hasn't been donated to yet. If it is a new charity, it'll add it to the list and increase the size. And my two string function is just a way to display all those details, display the username, the number of donations, the total donations. And we could add any calculations like average if we wanted to, but I've kept it nice and simple. Just display the details and show the list of charities that this user has donated to. So I've done that already over here with all my code. So let's go see how we can use this in our main program. So as I said, the idea behind this object is that it gets created when you log on and it stays there for the duration of your session. So when we log on over here, we've got this code from this previous video. There's a link to the previous video on how you can do a nice login screen. So when we log on, we keep track of the user, we keep track of the user type, but this is actually where I'm going to instantiate my object. So what I'm going to do is at the top here and the public, I'm also going to create a domain of type T user because that's the object that I created. Just a reminder for you to be able to use these objects and the methods you need to make sure that you've added the class to the top there there you can see that class there has been added so that means this unit can use that particular object's details so there's my main class and then when the user logs on i'm going to over here create the main class so the class is then going to go to a t user dot create and we need to give it the username which we're going to get from that field there which is recording from the database and that's going to create my object and it's just going to stay there. And then when we want to do things like add donations, we're going to add it to this particular class. So what I've got over here is I've got a couple of buttons that we can use. When we load previous donations, I want to go through the database that's over here. And if we find a match of who the donor is, so this is the same donor as what the person that's logged on, then we're going to add these details. So this is loading all the previous donations to that particular object. So when I click on load previous donations, we're going to loop through that database table. So let's write the code for that. So there's the generic layout of my going through a table. Remember, we're going through the donations table, not the users. So we're using the data module. So we're using the with clause and we go to the first record while we're not at the end of the database table and keep going to the next. Now, what we are doing is we're going through this donations table, looking at the donor, seeing if it matches the user that's currently logged on. If it is, then we're going to add the charity name and the amount to the object's details. 
So I'm going to ask if TBL donations. I'm looking for the donor field. Remember, this is the donor field in the donation. If that's the same as the user that has logged on, you remember that we've got a user global variable, which has the user that's logged on. So that way we can always find out who's logged on by using that global variable. So if that's a match, then we want to go, oh, main dot and we want to add a donation and what do we want to add an amount that's going to be tbl donations and let's look at which field we're looking at the amount field so we give it the amount field and then the second parameter is the name of the charity so that'll be tbl donations and that'll be the charity name field so yeah we're going to say charity name field so every time we find a matching username in the donor table, we're going to go fetch that amount and charity for that donation and add it to my main. And I've already got a display stats button. And in that button, I just clear the rich edit and then I use the two string function of my object to display the details. So I can now move this out the way because the idea is if you log in successfully, then it will create the object, but it'll also move that panel up to zero zero so we can see it. it creates the object and it does nothing to it other than create it. And then and as we click on that load button, it will go through the database and load all of the amounts and charities of that particular user that's made those donations. So let's go test it quickly. So we're going to log on and that's all successful. So now we're looking for John Smith. So we can load the previous load. And then if I click on display stats, there's John Smith there. He's made five donations. That's the total of all the donations. And those are the charities that he's donated to. So we're going to just do this little button where we can add a donation just randomly. It's another way that you could interact with an object. Maybe you don't want to interact with the database, but you want to keep this object open. And as you do certain things, you keep interacting with it. So we're going to use this as an example for that. So if I click on the add new donation, We've got those two amounts. It's as simple as saying O oh, main, O oh, main dot add donation R amount and S charity. So we add those two fields and then we are actually going to display in the rich edit right here. Lines add O oh, main dot to string. Every time we add to a charity, it's going to update the stats that is displayed. So let's test that. But before we do that, we must actually move this out the way so that we can't see it. And ideally, you would make your screen small enough so you can't see that panel. So let's log on, logged on successfully, and we're going to load our previous donations and we can see all the stats. But if we add this 100 Rand to, from the ABC charity, you can see that it's updated extra one, updated the amount, added ABC charity to that particular list of donors. One thing to take note of when you use an object for the life cycle of the user is that if they log out, you want to then get rid of that object or free it. So what I've done is I've added a log out button and when you click on it, I want this form to move to the side over here and I want to be able to log on again and so on. So what I'm going to do here with the log out button is simply move that panel out the way by changing its top and left properties. And then I'm going to make sure that when the user logs on that there's no password there. So I'm going to change that EDT password edit control to clear it so that the password's not still there. But let's leave the username there just in case they want to use the same username. But here's the key part. When we do all of that, I don't want to use my object anymore. I want to free it up. So I'm just going to main dot free, which uses the deconstructor to free up that memory so that when the user logs on, it's a brand new object that will be created. That new user's details. We're going to move that over there. Make this a bit smaller. So let's run it. So when we log on, we are welcomed then we can load our previous stats and display them and then when we log out we are back to our screen now if i log on as a different user say it's admin and with the admin's password now log in successfully now, as you can see it's still displaying the details from the previous one if i display stats now you'll notice that it clears it and shows you that no one selected so it would probably be a good idea when we log out to also clear this rich edit but you can see when i display the stats it's actually displaying the stats now of the new object which is the one created for the administrator so that's not being influenced by the data from the previous previous object. So just remember over here, I'm going to clear the stats rich edit so that we don't see the data from the previous user. So there we go. So that's just a basic idea of an object where the object is created when the user logs on as almost like the object is a user session. Whatever the user is doing while they are using the program, you can do things like add values or keep track of what they are doing if you want that. And at the end, you can free it when they log out. So hopefully that gives you another idea of how you can use an object for your pet.
support the channel by clicking on that subscribe button and so that you don't miss out whenever we post any new tips. Also go to the playlist at CRT Pat Tips as well as find us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.